Uh, hello listeners, this is Peter Hormold and today I am presenting a presentation on how to build a model when a sketch doesn't cut it. Uh, this is purely just the basics. It covers the type of models we have, how a model should look, why you should build a model, and what materials and equipment you need to buy a model. This presentation is for TUT students of Tuana University of Technology, first year, second year, and for whoever wants to start building models. How to build a model when a sketch just doesn't cut it. Uh, you can see here a final model, fifth year model of uh, Jean Maber building a skyscraper. This is a very well laser cut model. This is a bit more advanced than what I'm teaching you. I would just like to show you how models can look if you start from first year developing the skill to build these models. Uh, here we see a thesis model 2011 by Peter Jonkers. And as you can see, the scale is quite large when you have to build your final model. Here is a uh, international model, uh, those I'll also be showing to compare what we are currently doing in TUT and how it compares to uh, models uh, on an international basis. Okay, so let's jump into it. Why do architects design with models? Well, according to the book 101 Things I Learned in Architectural School, the designing with models gives you a three dimensional plane to work with. Uh, it's useful building with models, um, especially uh, if you des start designing with mass models. Uh, the picture at the back is a fifth year skyscraper over model designed by TUT students in 2013. Uh, with this typical type of model most architects do use and do, you, uh, do build. Um, this is a concept model by Stefani Herring. Um, the next one is another concept model built out of uh, foam used to see the spatial orientation and massing of the site and cut into the site um, done by Jean Mayberg for his thesis concept uh, in 2014. This is another concept model just showing the spatial orientation uh, done by uh, Studio uh, 0.12 Architects. Now, why is building models better than sketching? Not all architects sketch equally well or can deliver a proper presentation through sketching um, or, con uh, or com can communicate through sketching. Um, as you can see here is a sketch by Le Corbusier which is not very pretty and it doesn't really convey what is going on on the site or what he's doing there um, when in actual fact the the sculpture does look like that but for the everyday person you wouldn't know what you're looking at so the uh, <coughs> so the other reasons why it's better than sketching you get models that is in 3D and all the advantages of 3D. You can see in perspective, you can see how they look in relations. Where compared to a sketch, it's 2D. You do not see the depth of the of the building. Um, where with uh, because it's 3D, you can immediately uh, use your senses to see the scale, the depth, the feel, the texture of the project, and um, all the other advantages uh, from uh, uh, from from going from 2D to 3D. Another reason is it's hands-on. Um, if you build a model, you have something that you can pick up, you can turn around, you can see from a different angle. You <coughs> you can see how the shadows play on the building, and that is quite important. Which a sketch only gives you one point of view. Um, so please, when you design to build your models, please keep in mind that it should be able to pick up, move around and be viewed from different angles. And one of the most popular reasons 
uh, that the public see architectural models is for presentation. You make an absolute beautiful model and without even a presentation poster you can convey exactly what your building wants, what your building needs and, and you can convey to the client immediately how beautiful this building can, uh, can look. Then finally one of the best reasons to build a, a proper model is that it looks better than a render. Um, a, a well constructed model will s it will move us and stir feelings in a client where a render just doesn't cut it and it's in 3D so immediately it gives you the sense that it will work where a render you can photoshop and cheat it a little bit um, and since it's a model it will be immediately classified as a sculpture as soon as it's beautiful um, a few other models that I can show that are simplistic, conceptual, like um, uh, this one, uh, Macuet Constantino, or even a date with data, which is presented in a sculpture like fashion, selling your idea immediately of the absolute tr the tranquility and the beauty of the site uh, of the of the project. Um, one of our own models. We, uh, which we can show is the model of Sias, a thesis student last year 2014 where he um, made a train station and this whole sculptural effect which he uh, created with wood gives immediately the, the larger scale in the context of his building. Okay, now since you have an idea why you should build models, let me show you why, uh, what type of models you can start thinking of for your next project. The first model which would probably be used the most as a first year student is your concept model. Now your concept model is there to convey your design development at the end of uh, your it's there to convey your design development so each time you fidget with your model you get to understand it much more especially if it's in 3d it's hands-on and for a concept model you rip apart rip it apart take it apart reconstruct it and you understand the space orientation much much better than a computer generated model uh, the second type of model we you can look at is a mass model this model uh, specifically conveys the the massing and the space spatial orientation which you desire in your design. Um, a lot of mass models are also conceptual models, but as you can see, this uh, Francis uh, blanket has a final model, uh, a mass model as a final model as well, because it's so beautifully uh, put together. Uh, the third type of model we can start looking at is the context model. Uh, the context, mo context model's main objective is to convey the surrounding area of a building, uh, the surrounding area of your site. If it's a hilly site, uh, or sorry, if it's a heavy contoured site, or a highly densely populated site, high uh, with a small with small earths compared to large air open areas, the context model immediately tells you where you are, what you need, uh, no, where you are, um, what type of area you are in, and how you should approach your design. Um, a lot of context models are also uh, used for conceptual models, but as you can see, with, see here with Monet Ritz, uh context model last year, 2014, it's also used as a final model. Uh, then we come to the the cream of the crop of models is where your detailed model is important. It will convey how your building looks, the feeling of your building, and the details of your model can be observed by your client, by the lecture, and this will immediately show the effort you put in what goes behind the thought and that you can actually build this thing um, 
it is very difficult to get a very beautiful detailed model but as we go on I will, uh, I will show you how to do that further now the last model we're going to look at uh, a type of model we're going to look at is structural detailed models which uh, US first years will be focusing on your uh, house section now this is a certain part of your building which you have to convey a construction detail or design feature that you have to build with a lot of effort a lot and put a lot of time into it to make it um, as neat and beautiful as possible to convert uh, to um, communicate the idea you're trying to give now um, as you all are aware the architects are huge fans of building models scale one to one since the buildings we are building are scale one to one <coughs> now um, in order to build these models you should be aware of the materials you can use as soon as you master how your materials work how they fit together you can make your model um, you can design your model in a, such a fashion to complement each other uh, the most basic of materials is uh, malgray or gray board as more popularly known you can get it in certain thicknesses they are mostly used to build your base um, they aren't too difficult to cut by hand or to cut with a laser cutter they aren't that expensive and they give a nice contrast with other materials when in use uh, well, it's not that hard to glue them um, another basic building material is triplex which is much more expensive than Malgrade but it's much it, it, you work very you can work very neat with it by hand or by laser cut and it gives you very good contrast with your Malgrade or whatever you choose to use your base mm, triplex is mainly used for the main building uh, since it's very white it's very monotone you can use you can make a, a, a beautiful monotone building out of it and it's much easier to glue and to cut than Malgrave uh, then we come to uh, not so common used materials which there is a lot of and I do encourage you to experiment with them the first one is cork board which a lot of people use as a base or clad over a base or just to give a texture of a wall in a, in a building it's much harder to glue uh, but more difficult to cut but it is a great material to work with especially if you know how to uh, cardboard is also uh, sli slightly less popular than Malgra but it is a cheap uh, commodity to convey very light very quick models especially with your concept models um, next we have balsa wood which is uh, one of the most expensive uh, parts of a model board but you can create absolutely beautiful models with them and they are <coughs> easy to work with easy to clue easy to um, create something beautiful with it the next part is paper uh, yes we sketch on paper but paper is also a very good way of building concept models um, it's inexpensive, it's, you can draw on it as soon as you need windows, you can laser cut it quite quick. Um, although most people overlook this as a model building material, it is quite one of the nicest building materials there is. Um, after that you get tracing paper, which is exactly the same as paper, but you convey more of a glass feel or see-through area to it. Or even water if you like. This is also, this is a bit more expensive than paper, but it is... A nice nice material to work with especially with the skins of your building um, then for more conceptual development you use magazines try to get architectural magazines that aren't being read or old ones which you can cut which the text would just give a bit more of an atmosphere to your concept models and especially if it's architectural magazines it gives you just that extra layer of being um, architectural uh, after that we get to plywood which is starting to become very popular under um, TUT students to use uh, to use as base uh, unfortunately the laser cutter can only cut uh, 3.6 millimeter but don't let that small depth stop you go get thicker plywood 
build a base by hand and saw and hacksaw and hammer and nails um, it's a bit difficult to work uh, to work with uh, a bit difficult to glue but as soon as you get it right you have extremely sturdy base and it's lovely to work with after that um, of uh, another product very close to plywood is MDF which is a bit easier to work with than plywood but it gives you exactly the same feeling texture for your model base and now we are coming to a bit more unconventional products uh, polystyrene is very well used in uh, massing models and conceptual models trying to get weird shapes um, it's good to work with a uh, bit hard to get your right polystyrene, bit difficult to glue, you can't really spray paint it, but it is an essential part of mass model. After that we get concrete. Now concrete is for conceptual models a bit difficult, but it can look very well, uh, very good. Uh, it's a bit more used for final models and very um, A very abstract way of building models. You'll see a few of them in the presentation later. Gypsum is uh, another product. It's a bit easier to work with in concrete. It gives you a nice feel, but it does become brittle over time and dirty. Uh, that you have to consider if you want to store your models or exhibit it in a uh, place where dust does occur. Um, like you saw earlier with uh, Jean's um, model. Sponge or foam is a great way of doing conceptual model and uh, it's easy to cut, it's easy to throw away, it's easy to get your hands on foam. Um, it's a bit difficult to do detail but you do get your mass modeling out of it as well. Then most people's, probably most people's favorite is Perspex which is easy to work with when you have the glue and a laser cutter. You can make beautiful bases, models, or even even just framing models out of it. Although not many people try to use it since it does dirty easily and is it is relatively expensive compared to all the other products. Um, ideas for concept models: you can get recycling scraps, recycling paper, newspapers. Most things you can recycle, you can cut into neat pieces and use as conceptual model building. For final model building is a bit more uh, um, challenging, but for first year, stick to um, concept modeling. Um, another great favorite of architects is mesh tape, which you can use for various things. It is lovely to work with, it glues easily, and it's relatively cheap compared to um, duct tape. Uh, then we come to cloth. Uh, you usually buy a piece of membrane or use all socks or t-shirts to get all those organic feels. Um, it's a bit more difficult to work with to build models. Not everybody can do it, but if you get it right, it looks spectacular. Um, this is just a, a image of cloth stretched over for a concept model, and it does convey the spaces quite well, although you can see it's not absolutely beautiful. Then, last but not least, you can use absolutely anything to build models with. Anything you feel comfortable, anything that's easy to work with for you. And as if you just <coughs> convey your information over in a very good fashion, it, you can use uh, almost anything. Okay, to jump into the next part of the presentation, what to cut with. This is the uh, falls into the equipment you need to cut your models with and what to work with. Um, your first and foremost is a cutting mat. Now you get various types of cutting mats. Most of them are green. You get translucent, you get pink, but the green is the base one worldwide. Um, the reason you have a cutting mat, your NC cutter blades last a lot longer than on f a floor or wood or concrete or whatever your blades um, you'll save a lot of cost on your blades and this costs about 600 rand and <coughs> for a2 and you will only need to buy one I've cut mine in uh, I've cut mine over the last seven years and I still have it most it doesn't fall apart it 
works quite well and um, it's a must have if you have two or three, one at home, one in studio, one in your cart for emergencies, you basically will um, never, uh, you'll basically always need it when you build models. The second part of when building models is steel rulers. <coughs> the second part you need is steel rulers. Uh, steel rulers are there for two reasons to measure what you cut by hand, to uh, and the second part is not to cut your ruler into smithereens when working with the anti cutter. Now, if you do hand, uh, hand uh, use these steel rulers, please remember if you hold it with your hand, don't put your finger over the lip where you cut, you will lose that part of your hand. It has it has happened to many of the students and it will happen in the future. If you're in the middle of the night and you're tired, don't think uh, and you don't think you are going to cut yourself. So please, when it comes to steel rulers, keep your hands and fingers on the ruler when cutting. Otherwise, uh, you'll lose a finger. Um, the third part of the basic toolkit for uh, model building is your anti cutter or stand cutter. Um, you can get various ones. You get small ones uh, for detail model building, which is much easier. Then you get your big ones, like you see here, which is easier to build your um, your base with and large cut pieces. The bigger the grip, the, fa uh, the faster and deeper you want to cut with. The smaller blades, you would like to cut in detail. Um, invest in two or three of them at a time, because if you break one or lose one, immediately have a spare. I have uh, three of them on me at all times. One breaks, um, I try to buy another one as soon as possible. Then you've all seen model knives. This is for detail model building, which you guys could try now. I would recommend trying it. The blades are just very expensive. It is nice to work with, but they dull quickly if you don't use uh, a cutting mat. And replacing the blades does take up a lot of your wallet. Um, so that's why you'll see most architect students using the stand cutter rather than the model knife cutter. Okay, um, then for a few unconventional ways, uh, unconventional tools in our uh, model building kit, we have the Dremel 4000, which in the laser cutting uh, department we do have two of them you can use. This is to cut your wood, your perspex, your malgrey in large scales. And if you don't build that accurately, and there are pieces sticking out which you did not plan for, the Dremel usually works quite fast, quite well, to smooth off the edges, to grind away all the unnecessary wood, etc., etc. Um, then the final part in uh, Model Builder's toolkit is the laser cutter. Now here at TET we do have the laser cutter and I will discuss on later how you set up your files to bring it to the laser cutter so it can be cut. But <laughs> And we also will discuss um, what's better, laser cutting or hand cut. Now the final part of the toolkit is your blades. Try to keep 20 to 30 blades on you at all time when building a model. I have in my bag 60 blades for whenever I need when a friend needs it um, we call them emo kits because it's a kit which you cut and you can lose fingers a lot of students have scars <coughs> um, but the more blades you have the faster your model will go because as soon as a blade starts dulling, it will start to tear your mo uh, tear your cut instead of cutting your cut. And as soon as that happens, just break off, continue. And the more you do that, the faster the clean you will cut. Another reason you try to use your uh, uh, another reason you try to keep your blades sharp is that if you cut yourself with it. The sharper the blade, the easier it is to heal, the easier it is for the doctor to stitch up. If your blade is dull, it will cut in, it will tear your flesh, not cut into it, you take longer to heal, it's going to hurt more. Um, 
you can ask a lot of senior students when they lost the tip of their finger from a clean blade cut they only felt it five seconds after they cut it off because the blade was so sharp and neat you can ask those who had a dull blade the blade didn't go right straight off straight through it took weeks to heal it was not fun and and they regretted more than those who had a sharp blade okay uh, next up we have a uh, next we have the type of clues you can use there's a big variety of clues out there uh, most uh, most of them I have used but we will cover a f only a, a small part of them but usually the most popular part uh, we'll start with Yuhu glue which is known for model building not only in architecture but in all other uh, model building um, genres it's a uh, very good glue it's very sticky but it leaves a yellow stain uh, I don't use this glue a lot because of the yellow stain because I, I, am, I am a messy builder but it is a very good glue next we have Bosti Clear which is probably the most popular glue around um, it's very good to work with it doesn't take too long to dry it does um, it's easy to take your models apart but also it's strong enough to keep them together when needed um, it's relatively cheap and at the end of the day you uh, it's uh, it's an easy glue to work with it doesn't solidify while using it um, one thing to remember though with Bosti Clear once you've opened it and used it it does start to evaporate over time so don't uh, so always try to keep a few extras that are unopened and still sealed when building a model next we have Bosti Clear Gel which is exactly like Bostic Clear except it's the glues not as f fluid as you would like it's more gel so but that can serve different purposes for different models and different ways of building it doesn't take it doesn't dry as fast as the uh, boss the normal Bostic Clear and this is the advantage I have worked with this a bit and um, it is it is pleasant to work with another popular Bolt is super glue, which is a quick stick, anything stick thing, including fingers to models <coughs> and clothing to models, and something on your PC will get stuck on your PC with super glue. Uh, but it is quite a useful tool when building large scale Malgrand triplex for just connecting the the, the corners to build them as quick as possible and then later on go over with another glue um, it's not the best glue to build large detailed stuff but as soon as it comes to small details stuff like trees windows uh, louvers it, it, it works superbly so always have one or two kits uh, with you uh, then we come to a very popular glue as well 502 glue which is like super glue but specifically made for model building um, if you do come across this glue, buy it, experiment with it, play with it. It is a lovely glue to work with. It uh, it's as strong as super glue. It's as useful as Bosti Clear. Um, it is just a bit ex more expensive than what you would like to have. Next, we have the Perspex glue, which you can buy from Maisie's. They uh, there are only used to glue Perspex if you use Perspex in your model. Next we have wood glue, which you can use for MDF and plywood and polystyrene. Um, it takes very long to dry, but it's also a very strong glue, especially used with wood. Um, as if if you have the patience to work with it, it's incredible glue to um, make a base out of. Um, then we have a glue gun. No, uh, okay. I use a glue gun for all my bases. Since my bases are large, it will take me 16 tubes of Bostic Gel or Bostic Clear to build, where I just use 5 or 6 glue sticks, which works out much cheaper. Um, it's lovely to work with, you'll burn yourself a lot, but it will save you a lot of time and a lot of money. Then finally, we have Prestic. Now, Prestic is a bit unconventional, but it does work when you start laying out your model. It is a great thing to hold your uh, to hold pieces in place to glue, or just to see if your model looks great in the place. Move, look, uh, take your model up 
look around with it and then move it. The press is isn't permanent, but it does keep your model in place. Okay, um, you have heard me talk about the model base quite a bit now that we'd like to use um, <coughs> wood glue or a glue gun. Um, the reason we use those two, they are very strong glues. You would like your base to be as strong as possible, um, which I will go into now. When you build the base, the most important part, uh, when you build the base, there are a few things to consider. Um, one of the things is the size of your uh, of your base, the size of your model. If you build a base too large, you won't be able to carry it around. Um, if you build it too heavy, you won't be able to carry it around. Uh, the best size I found to build a model is about 800 by 600. Um, it's much nicer to carry around, much nicer to transport in your car, and it fits through doors which you will see if you build something that can't fit through a door, what problems it causes. So please consider your size. Another thing you have to consider with your model is the context you have to put on it. Now the context is important. If you do not put context on your model, it is a piece of art. It is not a project then. You're, you want to convey the information where your model, where your project sits within its area. And <clears throat> okay, so, and that's why you have to build your base a bit larger than just your site so you can put <coughs> context into it. Contours on the site uh, on your model is important. It conveys the slope of your site and what challenges you will face when um, putting your model on the site and your design. Now, there are a couple of ways to build uh, a base. You can put each contour a brand new sheet and basically mass it up where you paste all the sheets on top of the garage, on, uh, on top of together, only um, cutting out where the contour ends. That is one way of building it. It's a popular way but also expensive way. The other way is to cut each contour plane individually and support it underneath in the uh, uh, with a base, a box base, and supporting your contours on top of that. There are uh, a couple of other techniques, but those are the two most popular ones um, at TUT at this point. Um, another important part is moving your model around. If you have a big model that doesn't fit through a door, you're going to have to turn your model sideways to fit it through, and with that, your main building or your contacts can fall apart if you did not stick it well. And when deadline crunches, you'll probably forget to paste things properly. So always consider moving your model around and storing it at the end of the day uh, for your exams. Uh, another uh, one of the most important things when considering building a base is the type of material you use. Um, you will see a concrete model here which is obviously great for storage, great for showing, great for people picking up looking at it but it's a bit impractical to build. So when considering building your base consider MDF, uh, plywood or malgrade, those are the most popular ones at TUT at this point. Um, they're easy to work with, easy to mass them up to create a nice thick solid material for uh, a, a, a nice thick solid base for your building to come on because you don't want to drop your base it breaks apart and your building doesn't have something on so material consideration is quite important okay then we are looking at the main building now the main building whatever your design is has to have a few things um, foremost your building has to stand out from your base you have to show what is your design and what is the context, what is your base, what is the site. So the contrast your model to you, so the contrast from your design to your base is quite important. And you will have to design and material uh, design it that way. Um, usually through material use or spray paint or something like that. Uh, the other thing you have to consider when doing your uh, model is structural stability. If you build a, 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 a scale model of a skyscraper and you pick up your base and you start 
moving it, it wiggles and falls apart. Now, that puts all the effort you had to null and void. You can't use it anymore. So, making your building structurally sound as possible makes transporting your uh, your uh, model much easier, much safer. And if somebody bumps you and you drop it, it's not that big deal. It's not that big of a deal since you did um, <clears throat> construct a, uh, a structurally stable model. The, the other thing to consider with your model is the neatness of it. Your base can be a bit sloppy, a bit quick rushed, and it will come out of the base. But your final model needs to be neat. If you do not have a neat model, you don't convey it correctly. This entails how you glue your model. You don't glue your model where it basically looks like where two corners meet, you, you bent the corner and it fits there. You usually overlap it in the sense that one edge sticks over the other edge to create a smooth, clean edge to uh, to glue it with. Um, you don't want to have glue marks. You don't want to have pieces of it not properly cut so it uh, it feels undone. Uh, the neatness of the model is quite important when presenting it. Concept models don't have to be that neat since they only show your design progress and not your final design idea. But final design idea are quite important. So the neatness of your model should be um, the utmost important with your final model. The last thing I can say on your final model is the amount of detail you apply. Now the amount of detail is directly involved in your scale of the building. If you make your scale 1 to 500, not a lot of building detail will be shown, especially hand built or laser cut. 3D printing is a different story. <clears throat> as soon as you ramp your scale up uh, anything bigger than 1 to 100, you go 1 to 50, 1 to 20. You have to show as much detail as possible. Uh, the reason that is important, your model will look very empty if you do not have the correct amount of detail. If you have a very small model scale, 1 to 200, and you have too much detail, you will spend too much time on things that won't be seen, since the eye will only pick up so much in your presentation. Okay, now that that is said, there are a few model extras that you can put on to make your model look fuller, look better, look looks like you know what you're doing, and looks like it's being used for the purpose of the design. First thing you should remember is trees. Uh, you get thousands of designs for architectural trees. Um, the most popular one used at TUT is khaki boss, which is sprayed uh, white and then pasted on. It is the most popular uh, since it's presentationally beautiful what architects look for. But if you use something else, there are one there is a few things to remember try to get them as vertical as possible don't try to get something that's bushy or vertical try to get them as long and slender as possible it just conveys an element of control when building a model and that seems beautiful architecturally speaking the second thing you can always try to put on is people now you'll see on the presentation uh, there's all, there are laser cut people, but not one is this James Bond or a, a guy in a suit walking around. Because you don't see that everywhere. In, if you do an office, yes, that's understandable. But as soon as you get this 20-something fit-looking dude on your model, that doesn't seem that realistic. Try to get everyday people. Uh, on the slide, you can see here... We have a pregnant woman, we have a drunk guy, we have a few, a few obese people in the background. Um, uh, on this model, which is my own, I even put uh, pol a police officer arresting criminals since in this area it, uh, it was prevalent. So try to use people from the site, photos from the site, to get the people, uh, try to use people and cutouts from the site to put on your model to make it more realistic. Um, 
Another thing you can add as soon as you go up to a certain scale is birds. Birds is important because it conveys where pigeons sit, where pigeons shit on the model. And that will show if your building is designed correctly or not. Uh, this conveys just another level of depth to your model. And the final thing you can put on is street lamps. If you have a street there and you don't put lamps, it's not realistic. Because if people look at your building, of course there's going to be a lamp a street lamp in the way. So try to do as realistic as possible. Try to put a street lamp in there. Try to show how uh, how detailed you can uh, think of this model. Okay, now since that is said, there are a few model building ideas which is, I won't say unconventional, but rarely used in models these days. And it's good to experiment with them because it's another element you can put on your belt of model building. Um, first and foremost first and foremost is spray paint. Spray paint can indicate zoning, it can indicate material, it can indicate style and it can be used in many different ways. Um, in this thesis project of Rikus Engelbrecht, Rikus Engelbrecht in 2014 he used it to convey zones. So if you have an opportunity experiment with it. Next you do see it a lot on the internet, it is light within the building. Now, as a student, it's difficult to manage your time so you have time to wire a circuit board to use lights. Um, it does look beautiful, but it doesn't give too much to your model, which you cannot already do. So this is just an afterthought. It is something you can work on. I haven't seen people really work with lights in uh, at TUT, but I would love to see it. Um, other ideas is a Zen view. Uh, also my fellow student, uh, Cornel van der Westeisen, uh, tried to create a Zen view with his own house project in 2014, where you pick up the model and you see it from a specific view, which explains a bit more than a render or just the plain model sitting on the table. Um, so force people to look at your model in a certain way and convey a message with that. Make a purpose for it. Another thing I tried a few times is taking your model apart. As you can see with my design here, my own house, um, it sits between two buildings and I wanted to convey how the interior space looked compared to the outside. So I built the model so that it can extrude with, uh, uh, so that it extrudes and you can look inside. And I had a few images uh, a few cutouts inside. Um, what is important to remember to do this is you have to have a reason to do it. Don't just do it for because it looks beautiful. Um, make it stable so if you pull it out it doesn't fall apart, it doesn't break when somebody holds it the wrong way. Um, and present it as you can take it apart. Present it closed, present it open and the lecturers will start playing with it. it and that's the best way to get them involved in your design. Um, now the last thing to consider when doing uh, uh, your model is the style you do it. 90% of architectural models is a dual color, monotone, double tone. It, um, most of them are a double tone model with your base one color and your um, building another contrasting color. Now this is a very neat way of doing it, it is a, a very controlled way of doing it and it's very beautiful in its own way. But I would like to see more experimentation, more spray paint, more color use, more Pantone color. Because 99% of final models in at TUT is a monochrome color. and not experiment, not wild, and if it's done well, it looks better than the plain one we have. So please do consider and start experimenting with it. Don't be afraid to experiment. Experiment with it. And then the final part to remember when doing a model is go big. Um, the bigger and weirder you go, the more experience you gain with materials. The easier it is to build models. The the 
better it is to build models. Now with this slideshow here you can see an Eiffel Tower built out of 5 cent coins. There are 8,852 5 cent coins in this project and it, it's, it weighs 42 kilograms. Now this is an impressive model. Partly the reason I say it, I am biased, it is my model. I built it. Um, this does give bragging rights to an extent, but it's not <clears throat> the Alpha and Omega. Do experimentations. Go big. Do things, build things that people don't usually do. That way you can make a name for yourself for <clears throat> uh, for pushing the boundaries of what is uh, commonly known in architectural world. Okay, now, laser cut versus hand built. The difference is easy to establish, but there are a lot of gray areas. Uh, when you consider to laser cut, it, you usually consider to do fine things, like the Eiffel Tower, uh, like the Eiffel Tower you see here. Um, that would take way too long to build by hand. Um, so you will consider to laser cut this instead of building it by hand. So most steel construction you will try to laser cut, whereas of hand bolt if you have smaller projects and and more massing, you try to keep it by hand. It looks it doesn't always look as neat as laser cutting, but it does it it gives you a better understanding of your building at the end of the day. Now which one takes longer to do? Which one is faster? Well, to set up your laser cut file usually takes quite a while and the laser cutting is quick. At TUT, the laser cutting is uh, a bit more expensive than hand bolt, but the hand bolt does take long to lay out and cut and glue. Where laser cutting, you set up your file, which takes most of your time, you cut and you glue your puzzle. Uh, both, depending on the scale of the project, takes about the same amount of time. The best way and the best way to um, choose which one you'll build is uh, what are you most proficient in or what you want to be more proficient in. Um, if you want to do more hand built models, they do convey something over that it's more of a crafting art, where laser cutting it's more of a puzzle building art. Uh, the thing to remember with laser cutting that it does leave scorch marks. So if you do not spray paint, you have to accept that little bit of a mess on your model. Moving on to laser cutting and what you need for it. To laser cut, you will have to bring us a vector-based uh, a vector-based PDF. Now this entails it has to be drawn on a CAD-based program and exported. The reason we want vector-based is then there's a line the laser cutter head needs to follow. And if it's a JPEG, it just sees it see pixels and it doesn't know which pixel to follow. Where it's vector, it's a <clears throat> it's a line it follows. Um, laser cutting has picked up uh, in the last few years and people are using it more and more. Um, I do not recommend for the first years to use it. I would recommend start doing everything first by hand and uh, developing skills from that. Now, if you want to come laser cut at us, you have to remember a few other things as well. Um, when you draw out your project, red line is for cutting, black line is for engraving, and for, for hatching an image on your project, you bring us a black and white image or a grayscale image. It, it, the way hatching works, it prints it out like an image. So here it takes pixel for pixel and cuts it into um, your project. Where white, it cuts uh, less depth and black, it cut, cuts more depth. The last things to consider when coming to laser cut is the size and materials. Now the laser cutter size we have at TUT is 960 by 610. The materials we mainly cut is plywood timber which is 3.6 millimeters thick maximum, perspex maximum 10 millimeters, malgre maximum 2.8 and triplex maximum 2.8. If you do have materials which is not listed here, please bring them, but be aware bring extra 
so we can experiment first to see if we can cut through it and how long it would take to cut through it because those are important factors when we're billing you for random minutes. Now, the place where most of these equipments, materials can be bought is Arcaneer and Gymnets. Now, on the screen here, you can see Arcaneer's telephone number and Gymnets telephone number. Arcaneer is more poised for uh, arch architectural students, but also craft students, where Gymnets is more arts and crafts. Uh, Gymnets has a bigger variety of things, and Arcaneer has a more specialist um, approach to, to the system. How not to make a section. Uh, the first US first year student have to take the section you learn in contract documentation and present it as a model to show you how to understand. Now the way not to do it is to build a model and just cut it in half. Yes, it seems silly, but it is one way not to do it. Um, the best way to look at it is in this picture that sums up how not to do a section because that looks bad. Okay, guys. Guys, this is the bibliography of the images I have used from the internet. The rest of those by TUT is my own, or I have acquired them from someone who gave me consent. Okay, so hopefully you will have a basic idea how to approach model building, what to consider, what to look for, how to design your model, and hopefully. You more of you would start experimenting for it since we would like to see TUT more model based than computer based uh, design.